the Duchess of Cambridge's best looks from the royal tour, the emerging trend of embellished eyes, and why are so many people going into goblin mode? Welcome to an all new three articles on the subject of dress. Hello everyone, Jennifer L. Scott here and welcome to The Daily Connoisseur. Give this video a thumbs up if you're excited that this series is back. I have three great articles for you today. Today's video is brought to us by Skillshare and I will share them at the end of the video. But for now, let's jump into the first article which is from Town and Country and I will leave all the articles linked down below. So the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge went on their first official overseas royal tour since the start of the pandemic, so it's been over two years and they were celebrating Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee year. So this article from Town & Country magazine shows all the Duchess's looks from the tour and we're going to go over some of the best ones today. So they made stops in the Bahamas, Jamaica, and Belize. Let's have a look. So the Duchess arrived in Belize on March 19th in this gorgeous lace Jenny Packham suit. It's an electric blue lace, it looks like. Oh my gosh, I love this. She's paired it with the Emily London Rebecca pumps and a scalloped clutch. And she has sapphire and diamond necklace and earring set that was once owned by Princess Diana. This is such an elegant way to make uh, your first appearance. It's beautiful. I love the idea of a travel suit and the color is absolutely stunning. It's that beautiful sapphire blue that goes so well with the earring and necklace set from Princess Diana. So this is one of my favorite looks already and she just arrived. Okay, on day two, the Duchess wore a floral blue Tory Burch dress with a tiered midi skirt puffed short sleeves, and a smocked neckline. She complimented her tropical ensemble with matching Cezanne baubles, an Anya Hindmarch clutch, and Stuart Weitzman cork wedges, which she later switched out for the white espadrilles by Stella McCartney, and those were the flat ones. So again, this blue color is so gorgeous. It looks really good with her coloring, I think, and I love the bold earrings. She's in the Caribbean, they're bright, bold colors. This is a beautiful dress, and it reminds me about how much I love Tory Burch clothing. Tory Burch was what I wore to give my TEDx talk, so um, I absolutely love her as a designer. Then things really got dressy on March 21st when she wore this beautiful deep pink gown, and this is by a designer known as The Vampire's Wife, which is a very interesting name, and she paired this with silver Jimmy Choo sandals, crystal drop earrings, and a Maya embroidered clutch. This is a beautiful gown. The color is amazing. I love the flutter sleeves, so that is beautiful too. Okay, on March 22nd, she was wearing a canary yellow Roxanda dress with bow detail. I love the bow. I love the bow and I love the yellow. I love the ponytail. This is a very cheery look. She has a white Salvatore Ferragamo clutch bag and again, those white and gold pumps from Aquazura and the Cezanne earrings. This one is amazing. On March 23rd, she was glowing in green while attending a dinner hosted by the Governor General of Jamaica at the King's House in Kingston. She wore a sparkly off-the-shoulder Jenny Packham gown, and she paired this with emerald jewelry loaned to her from the Queen herself. So this will be no surprise. This is one of my favorites. What an absolutely gorgeous look. There's something very 1950s about it too, but it's really beautiful. Okay, on March 24th, she wore this beautiful Alexander McQueen dress, which is white lace with a white Philip Tracy hat, pearl bracelet once owned by her late mother-in-law, Princess Diana. This is absolutely stunning. I think she looks so beautiful in white and the whole outfit is just perfection. On March 24th, this is her final appearance in Jamaica. She wore an Amelia Wickstead dress. And this is a very bold green color. And look at the hummingbird brooch that was gifted to the queen during her 2002 visit to the country. I love how they wear jewelry that has a history with the actual tour and the destinations that they're going to. On March 24th, uh, she wore this beautiful mid-length Amelia Wickstead dress in a light teal color. This is a really beautiful color and I love that neckline. That's very, very demure and gorgeous. And on March 25th, she has this beautiful mint green self-portrait pleated frock and white pumps. After I filmed the video, there were a few more looks that I had to share with you, including the March 25th appearance with the Philippa Lepley gown. This is an icy blue gown, and she wore it with Van Cleef and Arpels jewels. Absolutely stunning. I mean, this is a Cinderella gown for sure. And then on March 26th, she wore this pink zebra printed Rixo dress with espadrilles. 
and I love that color. It's like an orchid pink. And then finally, on March 26, she wore a floral peplum dress by Alessandra Rich with white pumps by Gianvito Rossi and Patrick Mavros earrings. This is a very vintage 80s vibe too, and I love the color. So having seen all that I've seen right now, I have to say that my top two looks are definitely number one, the Alexander McQueen white lace dress with that hat. It is so beautiful. Oh my gosh, I love this. Absolutely love it. I love Alexander McQueen, the label. And then the second would have to be the Jenny Packham emerald gown, which is absolutely stupendous. I always feel bad. No one ever talks about Prince William. He looked great too, of course. <laughs> so let us know what your favorite look was in the comments down below. Okay, the next article comes to us from The Guardian and it was sent to me by a viewer of The Daily Connoisseur named Elizabeth. And the title of the article is Slobbing Out and Giving Up. Why are so many people going goblin mode? What is goblin mode? Do we want to know? I don't know. <laughs> Look at this illustration by Esme Blegvad. This is so horrifying, but okay, this is somebody in goblin mode right now. So the article says that somewhere between the pandemic's third year and fear of the launch of World War III, a new phrase entered our vocabulary and the phrase is goblin mode, okay? So the term embraces the comforts of depravity. Spending the day in bed, watching 90 Day Fiance on mute while scrolling endlessly through social media, pouring the end of a bag of chips in your mouth. Did you just see my video on living life as a formal affair? That's a big no-no. <laughs> Downing Eggo toaster oven waffles with hot sauce over the sink because you can't be bothered to put them on a plate. Leaving the house in your pajamas and socks only to get a single Diet Coke from the bodega. So that's what is going into goblin mode. So it says the trend represents a direct departure from the hyper curated cottage core influence of the early pandemic days. So do you remember I did a video, three articles on dress on cottage core before the pandemic. So I guess this is in retaliation to that trend. This is interesting. That included pastel colors, bucolic scenery, and the showcasing of wholesome homemaking skills, such as baking and embroidery. Cottagecore thrived under the wistful ethos of making the best of what many people assumed would only be a few boring weeks at home in 2020. But basically what the article goes on to say is that people have experienced so much fatigue from the pandemic and everything that's happening that they're just giving up on their appearance, giving up on their manners, giving up on their the way that they live, and it's like, and a revolt of that lifestyle. So basically a revolt of everything that we share on this channel. <laughs> As one hashtag goblin mode audio says, if you can't handle me in goblin mode, you don't deserve me at my sleigh. Okay, so <laughs> what do you think about goblin mode? Okay, I think that it is actually a natural progression. I'm not worried about goblin mode. I mean, people can do whatever they want. The point is, is that we all decide for ourselves how we want to live. And I actually think that most of us have been in goblin mode at one point in our lives, and I have been there a few times in my life. Usually when you're in a down period of life, let's say you're going through um, a depression or something really bad has happened, or you, you're in a bad place in life, that's when you tend to give up and go into goblin mode. Um, I don't, now when I experience things like that, I don't go into goblin mode anymore. I think that was me, my younger immature self, where I just kind of just let things go, I didn't care. But now I would feel extremely uncomfortable going into goblin mode, I think. Because the thing is, is that when you, when you genuinely curate a lifestyle for yourself and you authentically live it, and that is you, right? And that's what I'm trying to teach here on The Daily Connoisseur. I'm not trying to say, do this to put on airs or to be fake or to fit in with this trend or that trend. I'm saying, make this who you are if this is who you want to be an elegant, sophisticated person with class, right? And when you become that, that genuinely becomes you. So then you can't go into goblin mode. It, it's just wrong. It, it would be so uncomfortable for you. So anyway, I think sometimes people need to go into goblin mode in order to get out of it, but the pendulum always shifts back. So I think the people currently going into goblin mode right now will have an awakening at some point because that is no way to live really. Um, I don't think. I think that that life is is very special and deserves to be celebrated and we shouldn't give up on things. But it could just be, you know, just trying to process all of the horrible emotions and everything that we've had in the past few years of everything that's going on in the world. So I think that it's uh, understandable that people are doing this, but uh, hopefully there's hope 
on the other side for them too. So let us know what you think about goblin mode. Are you currently in goblin mode or are you out of it? Have you been through it before? Let us know in the comment section down below. And finally, we are going to talk about crystal eye embellishments. This is a trend that I've been seeing on the runway and also at places like the Met Gala and very fancy occasions, but it's something that I've noticed a lot. I kind of like it. I'm gonna show you what I look like with it on, but it's one of those trends that is something that requires a bit of courage and for you to step out of yourself a bit. So it's called crystal eye makeup or eye embellishments. We're going to read an article from Pop Sugar, and while I read it, it's going to show some examples of eye embellishments. So it says, minimalism has had its time in the spotlight and it seems like maximalists are ready to shine. As a result, the streets are dripping with main character energy. I love that. <laughs> Gone are the baggy sweatsuits and stretched out wash days. Well, this is contradictory to what we just read about goblin mode, but you know, there's people going through different phases in life, okay? People are making it a point to show up and show out to reclaim the years that we spent having to remain inside our homes. Isn't this funny? This is like the exact opposite of it. <laughs> the biggest trend in beauty, according to Pinterest predicts 2022, is crystal eye makeup. Glitter, gemstones, sparkle, and full-on crystals are expected to dominate the makeup world this year, with searches for the trend already up 110% on Pinterest. So this is might come as a surprise to you, but I really like these. I've always loved fantasy, fairies, kind of like magical realms, that type of thing. So I really like them. I think that they are beautiful. Now the thing is, let's have a look at some of these looks you were just looking at. I think that it requires a certain amount of courage, but then once you get over that, or once you get over your self-consciousness, I feel like you could wear it. I don't know if this is a day look necessarily. I feel like if I was going to an event that I would not hesitate. Like if I was doing a red carpet event, I'd be like, put them on, <laughs> put them on me. Look how amazing Amanda Gorman looks. Was this at the Met Gala? Yes, 2021 Met Gala. I love that the stars go over her eyes and above her forehead. I mean, I love this. I absolutely love this, okay? And then the other one I liked the most was Grimes. And I know this is strange. I mean, that these are actual pearls on her. There's just something beautiful about it. I mean, the, the question is always, okay, why not? We do things like wear earrings, so why don't we put a crystal embellishment? What's the difference, you know what I mean? So I tried out crystal eye embellishments for myself. I just ordered a pack on Amazon, and I will show those to you right now. So let us know, would you ever wear embellished eye crystals? Would you wear them? Where would you wear them to? Let us know in the comments down below. I'd like to thank Skillshare for bringing us this video. Skillshare is an online learning community that has thousands of classes that help you explore your creativity and learn new skills. They have classes on everything from creative writing to art and craft tutorials to journaling classes and video editing. The class that I'm taking right now is How to Plate Food Like a Chef by Chef Rudakova. So how good does this look? I've been wanting to improve my plating skills with my cooking and I was like, I wonder if Skillshare has classes on plating and of course they do. So <laughs> I'm learning these new techniques that I'm really excited to use. So Skillshare is ad free so you can stay in the zone while you're doing your classes and they have new premium classes launched every single week. So there's always something new to discover. So the first 1000 people to use my link in the description box or my code, the daily connoisseur will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And thank you so much to Skillshare for bringing us this video. Thank you so much for joining us here on the daily connoisseur. Keep calm and remain classy and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.